my channel. If you're new here, my name is ECV and today I've got another video for you. Today I'm going to do hopefully a very quick wrap up of my um, October reading. Here are the books that I had to read back in October. So as always, I will start from the books that I haven't read or I haven't finished. And the only book that I haven't picked for October was Madiba Magic, Nelson Mandela's favorite stories for children. I will probably pick this in some time in the future, but for November, as you've already seen my November roulette round, this wasn't picked out. And the second book that I, well, I tried to keep reading but I haven't finished is, uh, obviously, Strange the Dreamer by Laini Taylor. This may be the new curse about my reading. I think I've read a couple of chapters more from uh, the last time I've uh, tried to read it, but it's a chunky one. As, as you can see, I'm here, I've read nothing in com compared to the hugeness of this book. So I really hope to be able to finish it sooner or later, but Maybe in December or maybe next year. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of not having finished it, especially when I still continue to say that I'm really into it. I love reading this book, but I need a concentration, obviously. And uh, yeah, for the moment, I have not a lot of concentration to read it. I will be able in the future to finish it and continue uh, the series because this is just the first book in a duology. But now let's see what I have actually read and what prompts I've fulfilled and managed to complete for the magical opathon created by Rachel from the channel Rachel Cherries. The park entrance ticket was uh, a book that's been uh, translated. It has to be my first read uh, on, at the beginning of the month. And I've actually made it successfully because I've read The Way of the Bow by Paolo Coelho. That, uh, this is uh, my Italian edition that was translated from the original language that is Brazilian Portuguese. Because uh, Paolo Coelho is Brazilian. About this book, well, um, it's not very uh, long. It has illustrations in it, like uh, this. And uh, it's an adult book, uh, a philosophical book. It has a lot of thoughts and reflections on life and how to improve uh, your own life. It also has some nuances of Japanese philosophy. If you're looking to read some of Paolo Coelho's books, I suggest you this one or the other one that I've already read, which was The Alchemist. The Alchemist uh, is more adventurous, but also it always has these philosophical thoughts about life, experience and uh, main topics like uh, death, uh, life, love, etc. But if you want to give it a try, why not to try in this too? Then for uh, the prompt from attraction um, part, I had successfully read the prompt that corresponds to read a fast-paced book and obviously I uh, immediately um, had to grab Physics Theories in 30 Seconds um, that was curated by Paul Parsons. As the title itself explains, it's about physics th theories in just explain in 30 seconds. You will have like this a full page just with an illustration and here is the explanation about each different um, theory. Here are some um, more detailed information and also here some link to other pages uh, throughout the book. So it was uh, really intriguing because uh, physics is a tough subject if you're not uh, very familiar with it. But I've always been fascinated uh, to it, uh, even though when I was a 
at, the, at high school I hate that subject. <laughs> if you just to have a, a very uh, simplified um, explanation on these theories but if you are into physics or after reading this you would like to know more about some of those specific uh, theories I highly recommend you to peruse around your local bookstores or if you want I suggest you to um, read some books by Stephen Hawking for astronomy and for more general um, physics theories I suggest you to read um, some books by Carlo Rovelli but I've managed to read this book in just one day because really you will read each page dedicated to one different theory in just 30 seconds. For the snack zone of the Hoppathon I had to read a book that is set or that authors origins are from some specific countries and I decided to go with You Are the Most Beautiful Color in the World by Golo Zhao. Golo Zhao is a Chinese illustrator. This is a graphic novel, a very huge one, and uh, it is set in China, one of those countries that uh, you need to use in order to fulfill that prompt. And uh, this is basically um, everyday life of an average um, middle grade student that has to deal with school. We are following him um, during the last part of his last year. And then the sport in general, his uh, passion for drawing, painting and art in general, his uh, friends, um, his issues with a local bully, and uh, um, he's a first love and everything that involves uh, an average everyday life for a teenager. So this was my first Golo Zao's book I've ever read. The drawing style reminds you of obviously um, some mangas. I know that mangas are Japanese but I mean uh, it reminds you about comics and uh, I love its uh, style and uh, I can't wait to read uh, some other uh, graphic novels by the same author and uh, if you haven't read any by Golo Zhao, I don't know if this was also translated into English for example, but I'm sure that uh, uh, from the same author you will find uh, also translated into English or also in Italian soul guide that uh, involves something about the afterlife and death and i can't wait to read that as well and the last book that i've read and uh, well it could be fitting also the last prompt from the hopathon which involves a uh, a show and its prompt was to read a middle grade or listen to an audiobook. I know I'm cheating a little bit but uh, they can also be considered as fairy tales or at least uh, middle grades uh, even though they some of them are a little bit gruesome and I'm speaking about uh, Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. This is a collection of six stories by um, Lee Bardugo that uh, um, will bring you back into the Grisha verse world. I've loved reading each one of those six stories and I will just give you a very quick idea about what they are. I loved how pleasant it was for your eyes because you will have each story that is decorated like this for example and at each page you will turn the drawing will um, will grow each time basically um, these stories are some kind of dark retelling on a well-known um, fairy tale and it is also interesting to know that uh, Lee Bardugo uh, divided um, these stories into different categories uh, based on where they are from like Zemanai or um, Ravka, um, Kerk, Fierda etc. So the first one is um, Ayama and the Thornwood and it will remind you about, about the mythology around the Minotaur and, its, and his labyrinth but 
always keep in mind that Libardugo made a very unique and sometime unexpected plot twist for each uh, fairy tale. And the first one from uh, the Ravokan folklore is uh, my favorite in all the book, and it is uh, The Two Clever Fox. And this uh, time uh, mm, I didn't uh, exactly find on which uh, folklore or myth or fairy tale Libardugo took inspiration. This involves uh, talking animals and it is uh, set into uh, everlasting winters. Then uh, moving on to the other two um, Robkan uh, tales, we have uh, The Witch of Duva that is a uh, uh, mixed uh, retelling on Hansel Gretel and uh, um, Baba Yaga and again another unexpected plot twist, a little bit gruesome. And then the last Ravkan tale that is collected in this book is a Little Knife and well this one involves more uh, about uh, nature and uh, magical power and a magical river. Moving on to the uh, to the only one tale brought from the Kirk folklore, we have the Soldier Prince that is, well, a retelling of the Nutcracker. The last story in this collection is uh, from the Fjerdan folklore and it is When Water Sang Fire that is a kind of a retelling on The Mermaid by Christian Andersen. So again, I highly recommend you if you are a Lee Bardugo fan, especially for her Grishaverse world, don't miss the chance to have a pleasant moment while reading her style in fairy tales. If you're wondering why I haven't given you a lot of information about the plot or other information in general on these books, is that because I personally don't like to know a lot about plots before start reading a book and also because I don't like spoiler in general so I don't want to give you any this is a thing that I'm always a little bit anxious while watching other people's wrap-ups because I'm always scared that they will tell a little bit too more about those books that I may be um, intrigued uh, on reading. It's just a kind of a disclaimer um, why I'm doing this type of video with bare information. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, please leave a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and be a member of this fantastic family of book lovers. And if you have any questions about those books that I've mentioned today, what are your own thoughts on them, or simply you'd like to have a bookish chat with me, please leave a comment down below and I will reply as soon as possible. And now we wait for you in the next video. Ciao!